Whoa. Whoa. Take it easy there, little probe. Take it easy. You're going to shake yourself apart. I don't want to try this again. This is Echo 3, and welcome back to our modded career mode discussion. I'm going to pick up three contracts to take tourists in orbit around Kerbin, but two of these stipulate that the tourists want to visit an asteroid. So we're going to pick up a few technologies here that will make it easier for us to capture an asteroid and bring it in orbit around Kerbin. And that looks pretty good. Now we need to build a massive rocket to capture an asteroid. So I've got the advanced grabbing unit there and a probe core and then we're going to put on a lot of fuel. Now I have a fuel switcher mod here so I can put only liquid fuel in all of these tanks. Normally that's not how I'd have to build this in the stock game but I can change these and these are all going to be just liquid fuel tanks and that'll make it easier. In order to really do this mission we're going to have to refine our own fuel from the asteroid so I'm putting on a uh, units to do that so we need the drills and we need the convertitron and I'm going to use these nuclear powered engines these are the Neptune engines from the near future near future engine pack and this is going to go towards a bigger base so I'm adding docking ports that's pretty much what I need out of that I need lots of reaction wheels because if we do not line up perfectly on the center of mass with the asteroid, we're going to have some issues with it wobbling around and, well, that could cause problems and potentially even destroy our entire craft. Make sure if you are putting on the in situ resource utilization tools that you add ore tanks because you can have the drills and the convertitron without an ore tank, you're not going to convert any fuel. Threw on a few antennas put this all in a big fairing, made sure I had plenty of solar panels and plenty of ways to disperse the heat, and that's pretty much set for that. Now we're going to build a just a massive rocket to launch this thing into orbit. I can use this second stage there to help finish circularizing around Kerbin and giving us a good boost on our way out to our asteroid. Now, I see that we don't have quite enough thrust to weight ratio, so more boosters it is. I'm going to throw on three of these larger solid rocket boosters, make sure everything is well held together with space tape or struts. And I've seen many newer players do this. You can only attach a part to one other part like this, so I can only attach these solid rocket boosters to one separatron and then to keep it secure, I have to use struts. You, you can't attach it to multiple Sceptrons. It's not the way the game works. Um, but that's, uh, I know I made that mistake when I was doing the game as well. It's going to create our new moon. Now let's go find one here in the tracking station. Uh, let's, there's a, there's a Class E. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and go for this big asteroid. That should be fun. Now we're just going to launch this massive rocket into orbit. The solid rocket boosters are doing their part. Got us enough thrust to weight ratio, throw this thing. And really I'm trying to get sideways as quickly as possible. So that's what we're doing. And you can see how my apoapsis is rising well. Then we are up to the vacuum engine stage. I mean, this is gonna burn for quite a while, but you can see my velocity is really accelerating and we can get into orbit pretty efficiently this way. Now we just deploy the fairing, set up our maneuver to get into orbit here. Just about, let's see here, put on the apoapsis, make sure I'm doing this right. And we coast up to our maneuver and burn, get us into orbit. Now we are in orbit, we can set our target for the asteroid. And I'm going to play around with maneuver node here and I'm going to eject Kerbin kind of funny and I'm going to... Um, change my inclination as well. I'm going to burn a little bit normal because the asteroid is coming up above us. And I'm not trying to do a very efficient burn. I'm trying to get there quickly um, because this asteroid is going to get within Kerbin's sphere of influence within 30 some days. So I've got you know that much time to get the asteroid into orbit around Kerbin. So I'm going to do a pretty expensive burn out towards the asteroid and get really close 
and then through a series of correction burns, I'll be able to um, get right up there and dock with the asteroid. So rendezvous in solar orbit is basically the same as rendezvous anywhere else. It's just you're dealing with a lot more distance. And I, I even have a little mission where I saved someone's Kerbal who they stranded him early in, I think, career mode or science mode in solar orbit. And I went and rescued the Kerbal and got the science out of his craft. So here I am. I'm just making some correction burns, trying to make sure that my closest approach is very close to the target. And ideally, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get this within... Um, ultimately a couple kilometers and then work my way from there you can see that my relative velocity with the target is pretty extreme where we got more than a thousand meters per second to scrub off so I'll be dealing with that as well I want to slow down relative to the target and get closer to it so just through a whole series of maneuvers that's what I'm going to be trying to do here it, it, it takes a while to, to get this done um, especially I'm not trying to do this efficiently if I was you know taking an orbit or more to work on getting something like this done that would probably have been a little easier but I'm trying to get this done within 30 in-game days so that's you can see what all my maneuvers that's why I'm doing what I'm doing and then once we get connected and, and docked or attached to the asteroid it's going to be another whole series of maneuvers to attempt um, to get it into the right orbital path that I want it so we can get it in orbit around Kerbin and honestly I spent a lot more time on this than I thought I was going to but it it ended up being uh, a lot of fun uh, quite a challenge here um, to see how quickly I can get a classy asteroid into orbit around Kerbin um, asteroids are kind of uh, a unique feature in the game they, they were added a little bit later in the game's development but you can get resources you can mine them for fuel so if you have say an asteroid in orbit around Kerbin then you can have a fuel depot in orbit so once you're in orbit you can refill your craft and really extend the range of whatever you've launched up there uh, so helpful especially if you're working with single stage to orbit craft or whatever just it's a lot of fun today actually I had uh, quite an enjoyable experience I went to my local county fair uh, you know with uh, the whole pandemic thing and everything things just haven't been the same but this year it was opened up and had some fun and got some fair food not not very healthy food but it was an enjoy enjoyable experience, uh, hanging out with some people I know. Now we're coming in. This is kind of like docking. I really want to try and get on the center of mass. And once we do that, I need to set up a whole series of maneuvers here. Um, try Basically, uh, get this as close to Kerbin as possible. I want to use aero braking to slow my velocity down and capture into Kerbin. And you can see I didn't have my craft lined up very well with the center of mass of the asteroid and it's, it's really shaking trying to uh, keep itself stable and it can't so I have to detach and reattach to the asteroid you can see when I fire my engines uh, it's creating torque and it's spinning around I, I really need to line up better I, I messed up I Sometimes I just get in a hurry in this game and I, I mess up. Apparently you can't just rush rocket science. Um, well at least mostly I get myself in trouble through time warp. Uh, and I'm running a better time warp. So when you see I'm running my max physical time warp here, it's actually six times speed as opposed to four times speed. Sometimes I will, I will take that up and make it run eight. Uh, I think I've taken it up to 12 before. Just the calculations aren't as exact the more you run, the faster you run time warp. So it's just something to be careful with. 
Now I've got my encounter here and I'm going to arrow break around Kerr, but I'm kind of guessing as to how deep in the atmosphere I need to go. Ultimately, I should have gone just slightly deeper. It, I mean, like maybe even a thousand meters deeper in the atmosphere. I'm not going to completely capture, so I, I goofed. Just, um, but we've got obviously almost infinite delta V, not quite, but I'll be able to mine the resources out of the asteroid and I'll be able to um, make burns and correct. Although the fuel tanks themselves, you're only gonna see about 200 meters per second of Delta V up top ever, but I can mine and, and get more and keep filling my tanks. And if I don't burn, well, actually if I burn about one or two percent, probably around 2% of my max throttle, I can pretty well keep up with my mining with the burning, although that makes things painfully slow. <coughs> uh, you know, I'm once I'm captured around Kerbin, it's just a matter of making maneuvers, and I, I can get it where I want. It's not going to be fast, but I can get it where I want, which is ultimately what you're going to see happen in real life time. This thing took me oh four or five hours of piloting and that's even using the physical time warp because some of these burns are hour-long burns just just to burn uh you know 50 meters per second of delta v it just because i've got so much mass on this craft so such a low thrust to weight ratio that these burns just take a while but ultimately i am able to get it done um Kind of what you're seeing here, it just took a while. And here we go, it's burning, it is changing its uh, velocity, it just doesn't change very fast at all. And ultimately what I will do is I'm gonna cut out a lot of the footage of these painfully long burns. My last video, I, I did one on one of the new features in the game on how to use the ground anchor. Um, I'm taking many of you have probably tried it out or maybe you've even seen my video on the tutorial on that it wasn't anything too special uh, just just a quick demonstration of how to use that if you find videos like that helpful uh, go ahead and leave a comment telling me what kind of videos of mine that you like to see um, generally I try to focus on tutorial content or really explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing, uh, not just uh, throwing together crazy things and letting you watch that. I'm trying to focus my channel more on uh, a teaching side of things so players can get better and, and learn. And in this case, you can see how I capture a Class E asteroid and get it into orbit around Kerbin. And here we are, we finally have captured, and I'm gonna need to make several more arrow breaking passes, but first thing I'm gonna do is correct my inclination. This is a very cheap burn to correct the inclination this far out, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna use the MUN as my target and try to get zero degrees of inclination off of the MUN. The MUN has a perfectly equatorial orbit around Kerbin, and I'd like this thing to also be in an equatorial orbit. With the inclination corrected for, it's just going to be a matter of getting the orbit that I want. So I'm going to make several more arrow breaking passes. And that's not too hard to do. This thing uh, actually arrow breaks pretty well. So if you're trying to capture an asteroid, I would recommend arrow breaking. You will see me from time to time pull up the mod trajectories. It is there on the bottom right hand side of my screen. I will click on that and it will give me predictions about where my craft will go after passing through the atmosphere. It's useful for landing, it is useful for arrow braking, and in this case I'm using it and I'm going to want to raise my orbit here. Ultimately I'm going to shoot for something around uh, 400 meters, or sorry, 400 kilometers above the surface. Now, I just don't have a very high thrust to weight ratio, so it's going to take a lot of passes to do this. It, it's very doable, it's just going to take time. And I probably will 
cut that out because that's going to get boring. Now we have our asteroid in orbit that I wanted. I want to take these six tourists and a pilot. And here is a pod I have just unlocked. It's from the near future launch vehicles, I believe. And this pod specifically holds seven Kerbals, and I have a seven Kerbal mission. So that's the one I'm going to use. I need a docking port. I need some... Uh, I probably don't need the heat shield, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on anyway. Make sure I throw on parachutes, because I intend to land this safely. Uh, let's throw on an engine on here. I'm looking through. I've got some different engines here. Uh, again, these are near future engines I've been trying out. Now... I'm using the launch, uh, the, not the launch, I'm using uh, the uh, plate there from the Making History DLC. The, the plate, uh, the engine mount plate there is a really handy piece that I don't really know any mod that has anything like that. So that one piece alone really makes the Making History DLC a, a, a very useful thing to have. So when someone says, what do you want? Do you want the making history or should I get the breaking ground? They both are very good um, DLCs that I have a lot of parts that I regularly use. So my opinion is if you can get both, get both. Now I waited and got them both on sale. I didn't buy them right when they first came out. I, I waited a little bit. Um, and maybe if you're tight on money too, uh, go ahead and, and do that. But here I am, I'm trying to rendezvous with the asteroid. So similar to rendezvousing with it in solar orbit, I'm going to set up my transfer orbit here. In this case, this is a simple Holman transfer orbit just out to the target. Um, so that's going from one circular orbit, trying to go out to another circular orbit here, um, which is what I do when I rendezvous. And when I'm about oh, a minute or two minutes out, I will burn on the target side of the retrograde marker, which lets my craft decelerate relative to the target and get closer. Now I'm going to try and dock and if you see a little red dot there on my nav ball, that is the docking port alignment indicator mod. Very useful. I just forgot to set the docking port on my craft as the control point and I would have got it first try. Uh, when I corrected that little mistake of mine, I uh, docked second try, no problem. Now the tourists want to spend 15 minutes there, so we did. And now we just deorbit our craft and land, and we will collect all of that wonderful funds that those tourists are willing to give me, uh, assuming they land safely. I, I don't get the money if they don't land safely. So we're going to land them safely here into the ocean. And that's that. We have just captured an asteroid and got us a new base around the Kerbin, and we got quite a bit of funds. We didn't really get any science this time, spent a lot but did something new and interesting. This is Echo 3. Thanks for joining me on my modded career mode discussion. If you are enjoying the series, uh, please leave a like and comment. And if you aren't subscribed, uh, please do so you can catch these videos in the future and not miss any of my future content.